Howdy folks, I'm in a 1968 Plymouth Satellite with a 446 pack under the hood and it's been sitting for 16 years. We're gonna take it drag racing today and do a lot of things to fix it and put it back on the road after all this time. So stick around to the end of the video, see how this thing turns out. That's right, this is my 1968 satellite that I bought back in February of 2021. I got it from the guy who purchased it from the original builder of the car who unfortunately passed away, which left the car to sit dormant since 2005. Now it's got a 446 pack setup that is in serious need of some renovation. It runs, but not very well, and this cold weather we're having is not helping at all. The fuel has fermented about a decade ago, but it's got a gallon of fresh gas doing its job to kind of stir things up. And the bumper, unfortunately, was lost a long time ago after they resprayed the front clip. But I'm going to do my absolute best to fix that ASAP. Now we've got a 30 minute drive home in a car that, well, hasn't seen the road in this decade. Wish me luck. Alright, this is the first start I've ever done. I've heard it run, but it is cold natured. We've got 60 PSI of oil pressure right now. Come on now. Let's buckle up for safety. Come on, come on Betsy. Don't give up on me yet. I know she wants to. I know she wants to. Come on. Come on. There we go. All right. I'm having to feather the throttle to keep it going. this thing run for about 30 seconds. Give her a little gas. Come on. Temperature's at 150. Oil pressure's at 40. We're moving. Does the horn work? That's the big kicker. It works! Alright, yep, it was worth the money. The exhaust is popping. It's like I got shot. That's the mufflers right now. That is the exhaust. Oh. Probably have like a bad ignition box or a bad spark plug coming in and out. Scared the donkeys away. Sorry, guys. Yeah, oh man. Pedal's a little grabby. That front right wants to stick. I think I probably might have to get a new wheel cylinder up on the front. It's gotten better though. It's cleared out some. I mean, it's not one to die. Uh oh, 
She shut off. Come on. All right. <laughs> All right. under the hood of the car that whenever we get back to the house I want to show you guys because there's a lot of really uh, neat speed parts that I think are cool I mean the fact that it has a six-pack was worthy enough to buy this car in a heartbeat I mean I, I was basically spitting with this thing as soon as I saw the six-pack that was what really did it for me I can't feel my toes and my fingers are you know whenever your fingers are really cold and you feel like you're moving in slow motion? Like, that's me right now. Oh, don't do it, don't do it. There we go. Go up to neutral. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, dang. Lost it again. Come on. Come on. Come on. years of my life doing that there's the house ahead we've made it alive I cannot believe it I'm so excited we just drove this car home I was not anticipating it to be this easy because it never is go on now just pull in the driveway 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 thank you thank you Now that we've got it home, it sounds just like a tractor. Now as you know, I was drawn to this car just based on the fact that it is a 440 six pack. It was not original to the car, but it is a six pack setup. And that's what I really liked about it. And it was a running and driving example. The only problem is, is that on that short little drive that we did to take this thing home, it was not a good drive. The carburetor was messed up, it wouldn't stay running, I was having to keep the, the pedal working to even make sure that the thing stayed running the whole time. The gas smells terrible in it, so I'm thinking the gas tank's probably bad. The center carburetor does not have a choke, so cold starts are basically out the window on this thing. Keeping it running was just a nightmare in itself. The brakes are a little bit iffy, the transmission doesn't even have second gear which I'm hoping I know the reason for that, that we can fix. So what I'm gonna do is kind of fix all that. And we're gonna take this in baby steps. We gotta learn some things first. We gotta learn, understand how the six pack setup works before we can even fix it. This system here is not as complicated as you might think. It basically works as a Holley four barrel would with a vacuum secondary. If you look at this, this is just a Holley carburetor that's been cut in half except they took the two back halves and just added an extra one over here. And all it is is we have our primary circuit here. This is basically where all of the daily driving and normal driving circumstances will be. This is your primary circuit. You got your accelerator pump in here, everything. Now on the outboards, we have our secondaries. These are all vacuum controlled. That's what these big canisters are here for. They've got springs in with a diaphragm. And whenever you have this thing under load or wide open throttle, depending on how you have these springs set up, that's whenever these secondaries are gonna kick in. It always depends on the, the load of the engine, what the desire of the engine is whenever these open up. Now the problem with this center carburetor is a few different things. Now I was really only running on this thing driving home, but the accelerator pump leaks out the bottom, leaks out the top, it doesn't really work that great, and the biggest issue of all is the choke horn has been milled down, which means that there's no provisions for a choke plate at all. So that made cold starts very, very difficult. Even in the middle of summertime, it's still very hard to start this car. They're getting out, 
covered it up with your hand and simulating a choke. The good news is I was able to find a reproduction Holly carburetor for sale that was just pulled from a running car. Now let's remove the old worn out unit to replace it with something a little bit more fresh. And now with both carburetors side by side, you can really see the difference in the two. This one here is our old one, this is our new one. Again, you'll notice that this side right here has had the choke horn milled down while this one still retains that. So that makes it a whole lot easier for choke functions to make sure this thing is a lot nicer on cold starts. Now something I noticed on the new one is in fact that the accelerator pump, the diaphragm right here that's inside this little case, this lever was just dangling. I didn't have any kind of pressure on the spring here because whenever you open that throttle see how it moves that's what causes the, the squirter up here with the accelerator pump to actually shoot fuel if you don't have that then you're gonna have a really bad lean stumble off the line and what's happening whenever that old one was there and why I think that this guy had actually sold this carburetor I thought that the spring was not in the diaphragm itself so I took it out and noticed something about it this right here is that diaphragm. What happens, that lever that you just saw actually rides against this right here. Except, when you put it in backwards, that lever's not gonna hold any tension. So what they had accidentally done, I bet you they had a leaking accelerator pump diaphragm, replaced it, and then put this in backwards on accident. And that's what makes me think that, because if you look, this thing is cranked all the way up on the idle screw, and it's probably because they were having an issue off the line, so he, in turn, cranked it all the way up. He bought this carburetor and then actually sold it for another unit, and I think he was having trouble with it, so that's why we're gonna fix it today. And I'm thinking that if we adjust that, we should have a good accelerator pump. So what I've done is I've actually cleaned up the gasket surface here. So we'll pop this spring in. We will grab the new accelerator pump diaphragm, in the proper location, and now it's got that spring to it. And then we will reinstall the cover, tighten up our screws. Now watch right here, see this lever right here? This was just hanging out and doing nothing at, at all, but watch. Open up the throttle, accelerator pump moves. That means we're gonna get some throttle, baby. I got everything running pretty smoothly on the primary side of things and it was starting to run actually very nice and a lot better than it had before. I don't have the choke currently hooked up to anything so it wasn't doing anything, but we have it. I still need to hook up like a the, the actual lever, the rod that goes to the coil that is in the intake to heat it up or you know do a manual choke. I hadn't figured out what I'm going to do yet, but it was running so much better. So at that point I thought, Let's just play around the secondaries. Let's see how they run when I actually hook up everything back up. Got the throttle lever hooked up, got the vacuum pods hooked back up, and I hooked up all my fuel hoses, and this thing was just running terrible. Running real rich, it would stumble, it wouldn't idle right, and it just was really just cantankerous. It wouldn't function properly like it was before with just a primary. So I unhooked the fuel pump and let it start to run dry so I could start to diagnose what was going on, and as I was doing that, as it was running out of gas, the idle started to clear up. I thought that's kind of strange that, you know, once the fuel pressure goes away, it starts to run better. Now, thanks to Thunderhead 289, this is something that I kind of knew to look out for. But if we look at these two needle and seats here, we've got a problem. This is our old needle and seat here. You'll notice that the O ring right here is pretty much flat. So fuel is actually able to rush past this as the pressure builds up. This is what our new one on our center carburetor looks like. It might be hard to tell, but this O-ring actually swells past the entire assembly. So what it's doing is it's blocking fuel from actually leaving and getting past here. So what we need to do is on our outward carburetors, remove this O-ring and replace it all together.
Man, did this thing run so much better. But now that it does, it's time to make some upgrades. Now, step one is to get rid of these terribly made fuel lines that were definitely a fire hazard waiting to happen. First up is to install all new 3 8 fuel lines starting with braided steel lines with AN fittings on the carb. So the factory fuel line is a 5 16 and while adequate enough for a stock application, we don't want to be missing out on fuel delivery. Now we have three carburetors that we have to be worried about and we don't want to be starving anything to death, especially on an electric pump. So that's why we're going to upgrade to a 3 8 fuel line. And not only are we upgrading to a 3 8 supply line, we're going to upgrade to a 3 8 return line. So we're going to run 3 8 supply, 3 8 turn and then have a pressure regulator that is a bypass regulator. We've got all sorts of other good parts that I'm going to show you here in a second, but let's get these fuel lines installed real quick. Now this here is a Carter electric fuel pump and you can see it's pretty compact. It's really not that big of a pump. We can mount this to the back side of the car on the frame rail and then put a splice into one of our supply lines on the, uh, the 3 8 fuel line and then we'll run hoses to this, clamp it down and run a pre-filter, post-filter, see how it works. Since we have brand new fuel lines, fuel system, fuel pump, we don't want to put an old gas tank back in it. So we're going to put this brand new AMD gas tank. We've already put the sending unit in and the rubber grommet for the filler neck. I've got a brand new filler neck and gas cap for it that we're going to pop in before we put the tank in. the gas tank out of the way we can really see how nice these floors are. I was not expecting that because typically right here is the first part to go because water will puddle right in the middle and then rust out. But this thing is solid as can be. If they replaced it, it sure doesn't look like it so I would assume call it factory metal. It looks really good.
So what I'm hoping to find in the pan is actually the band strut, and that's what is uh, it tightens up against the, the the band adjustment on the second gear. So I'm hoping if that has backed off and fallen into the pan, that means we can get second gear back. I've had this happen before, a lot of times where if you have no second gear at all, like it doesn't even slip, it just goes first, third. That means that hey, good chance that the band adjustment has actually backed off. I'm really banking on that right now. Hmm. Well, not so lucky. We got some clutch material here in the bottom, but honestly, not a whole lot more than I really thought was bad. Not out of the ordinary, at least. Sorry, I got in the way. I swear, I'm a professional. <laughs> it was on its way out. Yeah, the band adjustment. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. <laughs> She's way loose. So we're just gonna move this out of the way. Just real quick. And that's why we did it, because that was not where it needed to be. That was the piece that I couldn't find, right there. This is the other side that the band strut actually screws into. And if it's not in place, you can't tighten up the band. So it's a good thing we did this. Here's what happens. This right here has to lock in. Okay, there's a, there's a band strut on this side and over on this side. If this band does not have enough tension on it, it does not work. This is for, I believe, second and third. So the piece over here on this side actually was loose because the adjustment's on this side. So we're gonna put both struts back in and tighten this back up. That way, it'll actually work. I want to just make sure that everything is going to work, so I'm going to take a little bit of compressed air and watch this band right here as I work this. second third but it backed out we got it full of fluid uh, the battery is absolutely weak and the starter solenoid decided to quit working right at the last second letting her idle here let it warm up uh, we get a lot of blow by but she sounds really really good that's the header hitting the torsion bar too so that's great i don't see any fuel leaks Take it for a drive, see how she likes it. Uh, the battery is really weak because the tag's jumping all over the place. It does that whenever it gets really low. That's always good. <laughs> the good news is that the torque converter, I mean, it seems pretty road friendly. That's first. Second works. third so the band adjustment was the problem I mean it was literally so loose that it, it, it could not hold itself on anymore so that's great so we have three gears at this point I mean this thing is a lot better than what it was before when we first started I mean I, I put spark plugs in it you can actually drive this car down the road and it not be a hassle so I, overall this car is just improvement after improvement after improvement it rides great down the road it's quiet it's smooth the brakes work okay the, the the suspension is actually kind of nice i mean it, the power steering is smooth it doesn't throw you all over the road so overall the 68 satellite you know it's seen a lot it's been through a lot but i think the next step is absolutely do some burnouts so check out what we have here this is a complete bumper 
It's obviously 69 Roadrunner, but it should fit. We've also got the storage panel here that goes in between the grill and the bumper itself. Uh, it's not perfect, but that's okay. It's perfectly fine for what we're using it for. We're going to try and clean it up a little bit, uh, see how much better this car looks with a bumper on it. I paid 150 bucks for it, so I really can't complain with that one. Now, the good news is this filler panel is actually green. It's the original color that this car came as. Even though it's been repainted, it's not the factory color anymore. You know, it's close enough, and that's all we need it for right now. We're in Jake Strag Strip in Moulton, Alabama with the Ratty Muscle Cars Group, and we're gonna run our 1968 Plymouth Satellite with a 446 pack. We're gonna get this thing back on the track, see what she can do with the big block, and hopefully not blow it up and bring it back home in one piece. I always get so nervous going up and doing the first race. Being that I never ran this car, you know, it, it's always something that could go wrong. I never seen it like out of the garage. <laughs> yeah. It looks me. good. I appreciate it. I, just I was put, just racking my brain. I was like, where did that car come from? I just put, these are the wheels and tires off my charger. I just put them on this morning. It runs pretty good though, uh, as long as it When you step into it lately, like, everything seems to work. On the street. So we'll so see how she does. You may have to crawl into it. Right. Just right. got vacuum secondary, or is that vacuum outboards, right? Yeah, they're vacuum. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hardest race, and I hate this. Like the first pass is always the worst. Always. Not bad. Wow. This thing just hooked and booked. Dang. Kind of scared me as fast as it went. I wasn't expecting that. Dang. Woo. Yeah, I feel better now. <laughs> I'm glad that's over. You can tell I'm sweating like crazy, guys. Thank you very much. Could have swore that thing went faster than that. I had a good 60 foot, but uh, what a run! A 95, not that great. Well, instead of trying to fix a problem or create a problem, we're just gonna go right back out and do it one more time. Uh, being that that was the first lap that I'd done my reaction time really wasn't that great I, I thought it was better than that but it really wasn't so we're gonna try and uh, give her one more go and uh, see what happens now uh, I'm just happy that it's here I'll, I'll put it that way I know it can be faster I really think that it's leaning out on the top end I don't know if my fuel pressure is properly right or I don't know
cool off for a minute. I don't think my reaction time was really all that great, but which that don't matter. I still got the I got the win in that one, so that's hey two and zero. Oh. I mean, it's not like we're racing something crazy. You need a ride? All right, give me a ride. Yes, sir. Come on in. Transmission come up. Uh oh. Trans am. Well, dang. We need some WD-40. I'm gonna see if I can find somebody that ain't got some. Uh, His winch ain't working. <laughs> well, I got some uh, like PB blaster. That might like work. Spray. Um, if you want, I'll I'll give you a ride to my truck, hand it to you. Okay, I sure appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I was left lane. Thank you. <laughs> A little bit better. My reaction time wasn't no count. Oh, you run? I ran a nine four. I know I can do better. It's yeah. like getting lean on the top end. Yeah, pretty cool. I appreciate it. On that last pass, on it, I was really noticing at the top of first gear. I mean, you can see in the video, it's really you know, blowing out some white smoke. I think it's getting really lean on the top end, and I can actually hear the valve rattling just a little bit. So I think that I've got her just a little bit too lean, meaning that I can back off of the timing just a smidge to kind of help that out. This Mustang's fast. I'm not going to count this as a win. smoke is we did a 9-4 that's still it was sputtering that whole time I guess that might have been what our leak or our smoke was because it just got worse and worse. It looks like it's coming out of the front pump. I'm just gonna line it up with the trailer. Man. I'm not sure, but I don't want to mess up the track and cause an issue. So 
So three passes in, I'm gonna call it a day. I uh, hate that we had to cut it up early, but I mean, that's just how life goes sometimes. So we're gonna run and watch some uh, racing real quick. See some people are actually pretty competitive, but I mean, we shaved the tenth off for a time, so I'd say that's pretty, pretty good. But old satellite will just have to live to see another day. Well, we watched some drag racing and got the car all loaded up, strapped down, ready to go. I mean, it absolutely looks mean. And it's a decent car. I mean, it ran in the 9.4s. That's okay for a little street car. I was really hoping for a little bit more out of it, but with that transmission doing it that it does, there's just really not much more you can do. I mean, it got worse. You can see that's all up here is coolant from the overflow, but all this is transmission fluid. And as much as I abused this car before this event, I was certain that it was gonna hold up just fine. But, I mean, there's really not much you can do when the transmission goes out. And I'd really hate to be that guy that shuts down the track for an hour while they try to clean it up. But, I mean, I'm proud of her. She did okay. Can't really complain with a car sitting for as long as it has. So, yeah, look here. That's all transmission fluid. I just now noticed that you can kind of see it had some splattering on it. But I didn't notice that till just now. <laughs> Whew. Anyway, we're uh, we're loaded up. We're gonna head home. I'm glad I trailered it this time. So it is what it is, guys. Well, we made it back home, and here it sits. We unloaded her right here, and you know I've had a lot of fun with this car. This thing has been sitting for 16 years, but we took it and renovated it. And we we completely redid the fuel system. Got that new carburetor. Uh, fixed the transmission, put wheels and tires on it, put, uh, put a brand new bumper on it. So it looks really nice compared to what we had whenever we first bought this car back in February. And I have totally enjoyed doing all this work. I mean, it's been tough getting this thing back on the road after 16 years, but, you know, it was well worth it in the end. So, I mean, we took this thing and ran a pretty solid time. I mean, a 9.4 isn't that bad considering the circumstances. So. I still am a firm believer that, you know, regardless of the transmission smoke, I, I think that it was still getting a little bit lean on the top end. I think when we fatten it up just a bit, I really believe that we can get into the high eights and the eighth mile. So we're gonna keep at it and, and really enjoy this car because, I mean, why not? It's an awesome little car and it does exactly what it was meant to do and that's to be driven. So I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I have making it. So while you're at it, go ahead and, you know, drop a like down below. Go ahead and subscribe while you're at it and turn on those notifications. And hey, there's a link down below for some merch. Buy you a t-shirt, buy you a sticker while you're there because, you know, all that stuff directly goes back into the channel and supports bills like this. So I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.